Hello, my name is Colin Schumann and I will be presenting to you our enzyme lab project, lab section 8 um, at Towson. So um, our project, we worked with enzymes and enzymes are protein-based catalysts which speed up reactions without being changed and lower a reaction's activation energy. Organisms can contain thousands of enzymes that assist many of their metabolic reactions. Without them, many of the functions in organisms would not be possible. The enzyme trypsin in a protease or proteolytic enzyme, which can be found on the small intestines of humans. Trypsin assists in the digestion of many different dietary proteins. In humans, the enzyme can be found in the small intestine where the pH level remains around 8. The enzyme of the activity of enzymes is dependent on a variety of factors such as pH, temperature, and salt concentrations. In order to determine the optimum salinity level for trypsin activity, my group assayed its activity of digesting azocasein in varying salt concentrations between 0.0, .0 molar sodium chloride to 1.5 molar sodium chloride. We predicted that the optimum salt concentration for trypsin activity would be zero moles of sodium chloride due to our previous experiment which suggested that this would occur. Uh, the materials that we worked with for this project include azocasein, which is a chemically modified protein prepared by adding sulf sulfonylamide groups to the milk protein casein and sulfonylamide groups absorb light at 440 nanometers. In addition, um, our enzyme assays were conducted in accordance to Appendix 8 of the Biology 200 Laboratory Manual by Catherine Denniston uh, et al. Each reaction contained 500 microliters of azocasein, 50 microliters of trypsin, and 450 mi microliters of our salt buffer which contain 0 0.0, 0 0.0375, 0 0.075, 0 0.1125, and 0 0.15 moles of sodium chloride, which were all constant at a pH of 8. All reactants were also incubated for 10 minutes at a body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. And after removing the reaction from the incubator, we immediately added 500 microliters of 10% tri trichloroacetic acid, also known as TCA, to the reaction to stop it, and also to precipitate any substrates that were not fully cleaved by trypsin. After adding the TCA, all of the tubes were spun in the centrifuge at 14,000 RPMs to remove the remaining precipitated macromolecules. The supernatant of each tube was transferred to a cuvette, where it was placed in a blank spectrophotometer with a cuvette of distilled water, and its absorbance was measured at 440 nanometers. The reason we use 440 nanometers is because this is where sulfonylamide groups absorb light most effectively. <coughs> the control condition of normal body temperature, 37 degrees Celsius, was chosen for multiple reasons. One, it was the normal condition that trypsin is contained in, and that's what we used in our previous experiment. In addition, the pH of eight was also chosen because that is about the pH of the small intestine where trypsin is present. These conditions ensure a reasonable level of activity, and that is, and that the results would be most applicable to real life situations in humans. In negative control groups, the enzyme was replaced by 50 microliters of distilled water. That was done to test to see if, our di if trypsin would be digested without the enzyme present. Or azocasin, sorry. Replicates were also used to ensure consistency in our data. Three replicates were done at each salinity concentration, and one negative control group was tested at each salinity level. Um, our results proved that substrate digestion in the absence of trypsin found to be significantly lower than that of digestion with the enzyme present. Activity peaked when salinity levels were not present 
which meant at 0, 0.0 moles of sodium chloride, that's where the activity peaked, and activity decreased as more concentrations were added. This was not a significant difference in any of our data, even between the range of 0.0, .0 moles and 0.15 moles. Variability among all trials were relatively high, meaning that our data proved to not be significantly different. Because our experiment did not provide adequate, adequate results to test our hypothesis, um, we did include the appropriate number of negative control groups and replicates. Our lack of significant difference between any salt concentration did not allow us to fully prove our hypothesis. It was hypothesized that any presence of salt concentration would decrease enzyme activity. So a salt concentration of zero moles would produce the highest enzyme activity. The results somewhat supported our hypothesis. Although our p-values proved that our data was overall not significantly different, our values of enzyme activity at each salt concentration revealed a negative trend line, which is shown in this graph, indicating that 0.0, .0 moles of sodium chloride most likely provides the highest enzyme activity. Work by group E corresponds with our findings. They reported similar activities with 0.0, .0 moles salt concentration. However, they do contain a general zero trend line going from 0.0, .0 sodium chloride to 0.6 moles sodium chloride, meaning that their, resu their results showed inconclusive data of where the highest enzyme activity occurred. Our choice of control temperature and pH may have limited our final results. Data collected by group D provided proved that the optimal temperature for enzyme activity was around 50 degrees Celsius. It was also found within the data collected from group D, or from another group, my apologies, that optimum pH for enzyme activity was nine, not eight, which is what we used. Sources of variability in the experiment are very high. Standard deviation are greater than 28% in each test and reach 70% between concentrations of 0.0, .0 moles sodium chloride and 0.0375 moles sodium chloride. Potential sources of error included pipe bedding errors, uneven incubation periods between tests, labeling errors, unprecise calculations to determine salt concentrations, or contact with the pellet formed when centrifuging. Our second experiment was superior to our previous experiment. However, in order to get less variability and find significantly different results, we must widen our range of salinity levels and adjust our pH to nine and temperature to 50 degrees Celsius to reach the optimum levels. These results suggest that the enzyme trypsin had a direct impact on the digestion of azo casein. In addition, the, effect, the degree of effectiveness of its digestion had a direct correlation of the presence of salt in its surroundings. It would be helpful to measure the activity at a greater range of salt concentrations and at a different pH value and temperature to determine significantly different results. Our experiment proves that the ideal conditions to grow bacteria are at a specific salinity pH and temperature as bacteria will grow more efficiently when its enzymes are most, most active. For this particular bacteria, it is most likely at a salinity of 0.0, .0 moles sodium chloride, a pH of 9, and 50 degrees Celsius is where the bacteria will be most effective. That is the end of this presentation. Thank you for watching.